especially with the extension to two dimensions, Fitts law helps us to predict how long users need for one very basic task that's very common across different user interfaces. But there are other tasks and one is considered as steering through a tunnel. And what we will look at now is how can we model this steering through a tunnel and what that actually means. We will look at the difference between Fitts law and what's called steering law and we hopefully figure out how to determine the time to steer through a tunnel. So let's look at an example. So this is an application and what already happened is a user opens menu. And now the idea is we want to open up one of these submenus in order to select a function in one of these submenus. So the first thing a user would have to do is select, let's say, align tracks or go there with the mouse. And for this one, well, we can use Fitts law in order to figure out how long it takes, right? So we only need the distance and well, how big the target is along this line. But what happened if we actually reach this menu item that opens another menu item? Then this other menu, the sub-menu opens, but for this one it's a bit different. In order to reach these new menu items, we have to steer the mouse and we have to stay within this menu item. So it's bounded by, well, the size of the menu item. And if we leave that, well, the submenu closes. And this is exactly what's considered steering through a tunnel. We have to steer the mouse through, well, this menu item through this tunnel. This idea of steering through a tunnel can be traced back to much earlier work. And people wondered, well, what makes it difficult to steer a car over a street? And what we could learn if we look at this much older work is Raszewski already figured out the relationship between the distance a car has to travel and how wide the street is. And obviously, if the distance increases, we need more time to go over the street. And if the street gets smaller or less wide, then the task becomes harder. Well, in HCI, we typically don't consider, some do, but most people don't consider steering over streets. We are more interested in steering mouse pointers or pointers in general through all these menu items or other types of tunnels. And well, then it looks like this. Here we also have the trace and the pointer moves through this tunnel. We have a distance, just as for Fitts law, right? How far has the mouse to travel in order to leave the tunnel again? And we also have some kind of size. That's how wide the tunnel is. But obviously it's kind of, it's a bit different, right? It's not the same size. So we have these two things. We have the distance and we have the size of the tunnel. And well, this is, at least the terms are the same as for Fitts law. We also have the distance and the size. But what we mean is that that differs. And for Fitts law, we already have an equation that enables us to make predictions. And what we might wonder is, is it actually easier or harder to steer through this tunnel compared to while well, reaching a target as you would model with Fitts law? Well, look at, let's look at that in a bit more detail. So we have these two parameters and then the mouse moves through this tunnel. And for each of these positions, we might wonder how hard is the task? And what's different from Fitts law is that the, at each point we have to consider why we don't want to leave this window, this tunnel. And this part doesn't change. So for each point we have the same problem, don't leave the tunnel. So we have an additional problem if we want to steer through a tunnel compared to Fitts law. Or at least the problem at each point remains as hard as it was in the start. So that means we have to make the task actually easier or make the model 
predict things for easier task. And because at each point we have like the difficulty remains constant because we don't want to leave the tunnel, we can get rid of the uh, lock part. And well, let's do that. And if we've done, we've done that, then we might wonder about the one plus, right? Do we really need the one? No, we can put that into the constant B, so we can also get rid of the one plus. And so what we end up with is just the movement time is a plus b multiplied by d divided by w and thereby steering and you, we can see that from the equation but we can also see that when we think about it is a harder task compared to selecting a target while this idea can be traced back to Rashevsky, it has been rediscovered multiple times in human computer interaction the last time it has been rediscovered, and that was also the time when it became most popular, was when Akkot and Tsai rediscovered steering law. And so it's often also called the Akkot Tsai steering law. And we can also derive the definition from their work. Um, what we have is we have this equation, we have the movement time equals a plus b divided, multiplied by d divided by w. And we can also say, like, what's the index of difficulty? And this is just as for Fitz's law, it's a part right of the B. And so the index of difficulty is simply D divided by W. So we have the movement time, we have the A and B, the device dependent constants for the pointing system. And what's important to note is that A and B are not the same as for Fitz's law. So we cannot expect to conduct a Fitz's law experiment, determine A and B, and then just put that into the steering law. Right? So that wouldn't work and the predictions would be far off. But the idea behind this constant is the same. So there are different types of tunnels. Um, steering law was originally envisioned just for regular tunnels that don't change throughout the tunnel, right? But there are other types of tunnels. And just one example is shown here, are the tunnel first is widening and then it gets narrow again. And for this one, well, we don't really know what the distance, so we know what the distance is, but we don't know how wide the tunnel should be. And what we could do is we could think about each position while the mouse pointer moves through this tunnel. And for each of these positions, we can, of course, figure out how wide the tunnel is at this position and how far is the target or the exit of the tunnel away. And if we consider more and more points, we can end up with an integral. And that's exactly what's been done. Um, you just have a movement time, you have A and B, and then you know for each point of the tunnel how wide is it actually. And then if you take the integral, then you can come up with the results for all kinds of different tunnels. It's still limited. So you can think about widening tunnels and they are clearly different from the difficulty aspect than tunnels that get narrow, right? That start wide and then uh, get narrow. So if the tunnel gets narrow, then it's much harder compared to a tunnel that gets wide. And this is not really covered by, Fitz, uh, by steering law. But there are extensions to that. So this is still an active field of research. How can we extend steering law to all kinds of different types of tunnels? People also use steering law as a basis for going even further. So this is an example from more recent work where colleagues try to model circling objects. So you have a grid maybe of objects and now you want to um, select some of them. And then you don't want to like go through objects that you don't want to select and you want to enclose all objects that you actually want to select. So this, this would be an example. And there are all kinds of variations. And there are extensions for steering law in order to cover this more difficult task. And people also went back to Rashevsky's original work or 
doing work that's very similar to it and they empirically studied that in car simulators. So they took steering law to a 2.5D case uh, and asked people to actually steer a car through, well, not a tunnel, but a street. And what they learned is that, well, yeah, we can still use steering law or variations of it in order to model this kind of task. So if you look at empirical data, and this is an example from work by a cotton Sai, they had different index of difficulties and different movement times. They fitted a line through it. And then just as for Fitz law, we can determine the device specific constants. And what you directly see here is that, well, we have these two constants and A must be negative, right? So that's a bit uh, surprising, but well, for this uh, type of empirical data, that's the case. And then we can also look at how strongly does well, the line go up, and then we can also determine the other device specific constants. So if you wonder what's the constants, what's maybe the throughput for a certain input device, we can use the same principles as we use for Fitz law.